Hi, this is Ben Finio from Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to assemble the chassis for your BlueBot kit. The kit comes with all the parts you see here, along with some extra screws. You will also need to supply your own small Phillips head screwdriver, which is not included in the kit. So, to start assembly, you will need the bottom plate, which is this large blue piece of plastic. You will need these four small plastic T-shaped connectors. You will need the four long screws and corresponding four small hex nuts. And finally, you will need the two yellow motors. So the first thing you're going to do is take one of your motors and line it up. Look at the side of the bottom plate, this blue piece of plastic, and see how there's a little notch in the side here. You're going to take your motor and line it up such that these holes in the side of the motor are lined up just above that notch. And notice which way my motor is facing. You want to make sure the motor is facing the right direction so that little white peg is to my right in this video. Now take one of your blue T connectors and hold it vertically and it should pop right into that slot on the side of the bottom plate. Now you can see when I slide the motor to get the holes lined up, you can see straight through the holes in that blue T connector all the way through the motor. So that's the hole where you're going to be putting the long screw to hold the motor in place. Before you do that though, you're going to need to fit a second T connector through another slot that is parallel to the first one. So if I move the motor out of the way here, you can see there's another slot parallel to that first slot, and I can slide the T connector through from the back, and then put the second one in from the side, and then that creates a space where I'm going to put the motor in between those two connectors and screw it into place. So now I'm going to take the motor and pop it into place in between those two T connectors and make sure the holes are lined up. Remember, you should be able to look from one side and see all the way through to the other side of the motor through those two holes. And then you're going to take one of the long screws and get ready to push it through one of the holes. Now the tolerances on these holes can be pretty tight. You might have a hard time pushing the screw all the way through the second T connector at first. You can see if I look from the top here, the screw is not making it all the way through the hole on the other side. It's just going through the first one in the motor. So you might have to fidget with it for a bit or pinch the motor on really tightly. Or even use your screwdriver to start turning the screw, which will cut into the plastic a little bit, but that's okay. And you should be able to get one screw through. And then once you have one screw through, you can go ahead and grab the second one. And see that one went into the hole very easily and slid right through to the other side. Now, once you have both screws through the holes, you'll want to take one of the hex nuts and just thread it on to the top screw, finger tight for now. And then you're going to want to take the second hex nut. And this one can be a little more difficult because the screw is so close to the surface of the pl bottom plate. So you can hold it in place with your fingers on one end and then actually use your screwdriver to twist the screw from the other side while holding the nut in place. And that should allow the threads to grip, and then you see that the nut is actually flush against the surface of the plastic. So as you turn the screw, it should just tighten the nut and you won't even need to hold the nut in place. Now, once you've finished the first motor, you're going to want to take your second motor and repeat that same process on the other side. Where you can see here, I've already slid those two T connectors through the slots, and I'm taking the motor, sliding it in between them, making sure the holes line up, and then sliding the two long screws through those holes. Now, once you have the screws through those holes, you need to get the nuts on the inside. So this is a part where children with small fingers might actually have an easier time than adults because it can be a little hard to fit your fingers in there to get the nuts on. If you have a pair of tweezers or small needle nose pliers, that can really help with the lower nut if you can't reach your fingers in there. So the top one is pretty easy to do, but you can see it's a bit of a challenge to get that bottom nut in there. So again, we recommend the same process where you hold the nut in place with one hand and then tighten the screw from the outside, which will cause the threads to catch onto the nut, and then you can just use the screwdriver to tighten, and that will tighten the nut up against the motor. Once you have that completed, you can probably just go over all four of your screws one more time, make sure they don't spin freely. So you can just get everything finger tight, hold on to the nuts with your fingers, and turn the screws with the screwdrivers, just to make sure those are nice and snug and the motors aren't going to wobble around when your robot moves. 
So the next step is to attach the two wheels to the robot, and this part is much easier. There's no screws or nuts involved. They just slide directly on to the white plastic shafts that are sticking out of the motor. So all you have to do is line those up and press them firmly on, and then friction just holds them in place. There's no need to tighten any screws. Next, you're going to attach the robot's third wheel, which is also called an omni wheel because it can just spin in any direction. So this is going to go on there in addition to the two wheels that are driven by the motors to help the robot stay upright and be able to turn easily. You're going to attach these to the chassis with these two brass standoffs and several of the shorter screws. So first attach both standoffs to the Omni wheel. Just line them up with the holes in the wheel and then use a small screw to attach. Just thread the standoff right onto the screw, then repeat that for the second one. Now you'll notice that there are a bunch of different circular holes on the back of the chassis, so you might be confused about which ones to use, but just line up the rear wheel and you'll see that the two standoffs line up perfectly with two of the holes. So just pop two more small screws into those holes from the top, and then use your screwdriver to screw them into the standoffs and that will attach your rear wheel to the chassis. Make sure you get all four screws nice and tight from the top and the bottom, and then your robot should be able to stand upright on all three wheels. Next, you're going to get ready to attach the top plate of the robot, but before you do that, you're going to want to thread the wires from the motors through the bottom plate so they're easier to access later. They won't be long enough to wrap the entire way around the sides, and you don't want them to get tangled in the wheels, so it's easier to just take those leads and poke them through some of the holes. It doesn't matter exactly which ones you use, so depending on which way your wires are going, just pick a pair of holes that are convenient and thread the wires through those holes in the bottom plate so they will be easier to access from the top later on. Now you're ready to attach the top plate to the bottom plate, and if you line the top plate up with the bottom plate and look down on it, you will see that there are holes on the top plate that line up with holes on the bottom plate, so you're going to use more standoffs and screws to just attach those two plates together using those holes. So it doesn't really matter what order you do this in, but just one at a time, stick the screws through the bottom plate and then thread the standoffs on top of them. Once you have all five standoffs threaded on, you can then take the top plate and line it up with the bottom plate. Make sure the two curved edges are lined up. You can see on the left there, both edges are curved so you don't get it backwards. And then the screws should go directly through the holes in the top plate and line up with the standoffs in the bottom. If something doesn't line up, it might just be because you put a standoff in the wrong hole, so double check. You can also look at the printed directions that came with your kit if you need to see a close-up picture of which holes to use. So put screws in all five of those holes and then go around and tighten everything with your screwdriver. After you finish tightening all the screws, the last thing you'll want to do is take the motor wires and thread them up through the top plate as well so you can easily access them with your circuit when you try one of the robotics projects. Now the last thing you'll need to do is add the battery holder, which is this black plastic piece on the left here, and the breadboard, which allows you to build electronic circuits to your chassis. If you don't know what a breadboard is or you've never seen one before, don't worry about that now. We'll explain it in the next video. For now, just take your chassis and hold it so the curved edge is on your left, as shown here. You will need your own roll of double-sided foam tape, which is not provided in the kit, along with a pair of scissors. So you can just snip two pieces of the tape and stick them on the back of the battery holder and use that to attach it to the top of the chassis on the left hand side. Now hold the battery pack so the wires are sticking up. Again, make sure you're holding the chassis with the curved side to the left and just stick the battery pack on on the left part of the chassis as shown here. Now take the breadboard, which already has tape built into the back, so you won't need to use separate pieces of tape. You just peel off the paper backing to expose the sticky part. But before you do that, look at the front of the breadboard, and you'll see that there's some writing on it. Again, we'll explain more about this in the next video. For now, you just want to make sure that writing is right side up. When you're holding the chassis with the curved part on your left, you want to make sure you can read the writing and that your breadboard isn't upside down and that'll make sure that it matches our directions later in the project. So now you can just go ahead and peel off the protective paper backing, press the breadboard down firmly onto the top of the chassis so it sticks, and then you're all set. You have finished assembling your chassis and you are ready to build your first robot. Have fun.